My name is Nick Tomlin. I'm a sophomore in the industrial design department here in RISD. And this is my third year living in Providence. Um, came over from England. And um, I don't know, just been getting, I'm 24 years old. I had a late start. I started getting into RISD um, with all kinds of funny ideas, but I've been feeling my way through. And um, what was wonderful about the foundation classes was um, they do a drawing class, a two-dimensional design class, and a three-dimensional design class, which are all very separate. And okay, is everything, can we hear you? Yeah. Oh, we got the feedback. <laughs> wow, oh, great, this is great, yeah. I'll just move into it, <laughs> force you to do this now. Um, okay, there's a chance here. But we had a class where we, we had to take a, rep a shape and repeat it. And I, I took a coat hanger and then found a way of doubling it with another coat hanger like that. So you've got this now. I'm doing this in the wrong order. You're supposed to save the best one for last. Um, and that, that's what you get after you combine them. You get two halves um, which lock together and they make a very sturdy spring. You take a lot there. Um, I think you're all fam very familiar with this one. It's also the coat hangers. It's just the, l the long side there, making up triangles. And then, I really don't know the names of any of these. I just learned that this is a tetra tetrahedron. Tetrahedron, yeah. It's okay. got four triangular sides, and each facet is subdivided into thirds, right? Right. It's, it's the <laughs> That's what it, it, and it seems to do it on its own. It's quite happy to do it without me having to interfere too much either, which is nice. Um, takes my kind of human error side out of it. This was one of the interesting ones because I was going for a cube, but then I gave up and then just pulled the, the, the edges together. And you were talking, CJ, about what this might, what, what's the name of this thing? Um, I'm seeing, I'm see. it looks to me. It's a saddle polyhedra. Saddle polyhedra? Saddle polyhedra. Yeah. With three uh, quadrangles. Four. Four. Three. Four. It's a bipolar. It's like a You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay, so what they're, what they're saying is that this is a quadrangle. Yeah. Right. And there's another one back here and another one on the bottom. So you've got three quadrangles. Settled. Settled polyhedron. Settled polyhedron, thank you. Okay. The term is by Peter Pierce. Peter Pierce. Do you know the name for this one? <laughs> I'd like to know what this is called, but we can talk about it later. Um, so that was last year. Um, a prism? Is it? It's a, yes, it's a lampshade or something. Yeah. Um, so now I'm in the in industrial design department, and they make us go through learning materials bit by bit, and you learn steel through learning about wire first, and then, sorry, wire, uh, sheet first, just sheets like paper which you fold and do models with. So all that paper folding turns into folding um, sheet steel. And then you move on to wire, which we, you do independently. And I did this little, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to put down the mic. It's, uh, it's just two rings with 16 holes on each. And then there's four strands of piano wire that go loop round. Next one loop round, loop round. And you get a set like that, they twist. Sorry. Okay, they twist, and um, so that's a nice shape on its own. It's quite bouncy. It runs around. Uh, I, I, I guess I have a name for that one. <laughs> oh, uh, Peter, you can name this one. <laughs> no, right? Name that polyhedra. <laughs> well, okay. A compound of a, a ten, ten, ten sided prism, maybe. And it's the but reciprocal one. The ten-sided prisms on the top. Now this is the 
Anti-prism. The anti-prism, so these triangle. are triangles. Triangle. <laughs> this one, no, I mean this. this. These are the triangles. Okay. The, the, the horizontal plane is missing. This should, should go a plane through these points as well, and through these points. And this is its reciprocal uh, version of it. I've got a publication on that. If you want, if you want to have that, so give me a card, I can send it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, what's funny? Okay, what's fun about this one though is that it, you can organize it thus, or if you bring all the rings around, and you can bring them out, and there's a spring in there. I'm sorry. You start off with this shape here, and um, you can bring it up and twists like that, but then you can arrange it round, so this also works like that, and there's a spring. There's the, the, the tension in, inside the, the piano wire, which, which will direct things. And I have another piece which is actually in a gallery right now, and I can't get it out, it's in, behind the glass, and it's just two rings like this, but there's a beautiful field going on. You get the sense of just, there's a nice symmetry in it. Um, this I'm just figuring things out and remembering shapes. So that's a little s sort of sphere, two halves. Just wire, piano wire and copper, well, metal ring, steel ring. And then this last one is an offshoot of this one here. And you, end, you have two rings and a single wire running through four holes on each. And it, it just has a lot of energy to it. You can twist it round. It starts off like this when it's open, but you can arrange it as such, like that. And you get all the wires twist around each other and make a, it's a sort of little node or pinch like that. So and it's, they're all investigations and I'm just you know, flying blind right now, but I, I think this, the last, Three days have been extremely useful to me personally, so thank you for that because this is totally uninformed. And now this, I have some kind of s system to fit it into, so it's very nice. Thank you for that. I, I've been aware of Buckminster Fuller since I was about 16 or 18 in a, in a kind of far off way, and this was, I just got had a feeling I had to be here, so yeah. And I'm glad I came. I'm really glad. Thank you for coming down here. Thank you.